Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Q&A portion uh, here after the end of the State of the City. I want to first of all thank you for uh, tuning in this evening. I uh, really do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to join us uh, for the annual State of the City address. Um, I want to do a few quick other thank yous before we start taking questions. Um, and I'll try and answer uh, the questions I've got people writing down some of the lists of questions that came in during the speech and then feel free to type in questions right now and uh, we'll just stay and answer those for you. I do want to thank uh, Leah Taco, our executive assistant, Connie Menny, our PIO, and, uh, and, and, and Kristen as well, Kristen Banfield for all of their really hard work helping to put this whole program together here tonight. Uh, it is a lot of work to do a state of the city and a lot of data gathering and production, particularly here in the COVID area when we're doing this um, virtually as we are. So thank you to those individuals. I want to thank uh, Gloria Hiroshima, our uh, chief administrative officer, my entire director team um, for all of their work each and every day. Um, and uh, I just am so blessed to have uh, such talented and experienced people here at the city of Marysville. And beyond that, I want to thank all city employees, uh, those that uh, have been working out on the front lines during COVID um, and everybody in the city. Uh, we're just blessed. We're a, we're a lean city and um, our, our, our folks do a lot of hard work and, and you get a lot of bang for your tax dollar. I also want to thank our city council. Uh, we have a really cohesive city government. Uh, it doesn't mean we always agree, but we all, all share the same vision of moving the city forward and we work as a team to do that and I'm really uh, just so grateful for the relationships that I have with those on the city council and that uh, everybody is rowing in the same direction and uh, really has Marysville's best interests at heart so thank you to the city council for all of their work in the in uh, 2020 and every year but particularly in 2020 where there was just a lot going on and uh, a lot of emergency funding measures that went through and other things um, and so I'll, I'm going to start with a few questions that came in here uh, that I, I had some folks jot down for me during the speech. Um, first of all, there was a lot of thank yous in there. I want to say thank you for that first. A lot of compliments and thank yous. To, so thank you, everybody. Very kind comments uh, and glancing through those. Um, somebody had asked, I believe it was David, asked about uh, traffic regarding, traffic regarding inter intersections where the train tracks are interfering. And so you know, we addressed that a little bit, but I'll, I'm going to go in more detail. So essentially, yeah, we, we are the most affected city by uh, lack of grade separation in the entire Puget Sound. The Puget Sound Regional Council did a study on that three or four years ago, and we have no grade separation in our city. So we've been working, the council and I have been working really hard to, uh, first of all, find places where we could do grade separation, and then you have to get it funded. Those are really expensive projects. Cities of our size can't fund those. So once again, as I mentioned a lot during the state of the city, uh, we go after grants for that. So the I-5529 project that I mentioned in conjunction with the First Street Bypass will be a way in and out of the city on the south end around the train tracks. So that is scheduled for construction in 2022 and 2023, should be open. If we remain on schedule by the end of 2023 uh, with COVID, we, we hope that schedule stays on track. That's a state-driven project. And so that will be a way in and out of the city around the train tracks as well as alleviating a lot of traffic pressure. Um, further down uh, the road in the mid to late 20s, we have the uh, overcrossing at 156, which will become a full interchange. And uh, so that'll give you a, a way. And then there's a, uh, we're hoping to get a flyover of the tracks that are further to the west there as well. Then, so those two are funded. Uh, the third one is not funded, but it is uh, designed, and that would be a Grove Street overcrossing. So we did a whole, council funded a whole corridor study a few years ago, and we found that really the only area, other than the ones I've described, that you could do serious grade separation was at Grove. The reason is, for instance, if you wanted to do grade separation at 4th, you've got five-lane roadway, you wipe out access to all those businesses and side streets and you know, by the time you would have to buy up all those businesses, you wouldn't now connect to Cedar and Beach and all that unless you built those up. And so it would be million, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to do something like that. 88th, you would go over State Street because the tracks are so close. So then most people want to get to State Street. So you got that problem. You got the cemetery and, and all those things. 116th, you have the same thing. Grove didn't have those problems. You don't have um, 
a lot of property you would need to buy. There's not businesses right around there. You could drop people right over the tracks by the community transit park and ride. It's perfect for public safety, um, close by, so our emergency vehicles could get out of the growth station there and jump right over and get to the west side of the tracks um, in an emergency. So that is designed, not funded, but we are working with our state legislature to, to try and hopefully at some point get that funded. So those are those are the things we're doing there. So, you, you know, two projects funded and one that we're working on for the future. So I hope that answers your question, David. You know, I wanted to recognize um, also here and looking through these notes, Shane Monta, uh, and he, he typed this in, so I, I, don't, I, I don't think I'll have an issue with this. I'm so proud of Shane. Um, when I was discussing the Embedded Social Worker Program, he typed in a thank you to Mike and Rochelle that in, in his words saved his life and he has uh, gone through the Embedded Social Worker Program, the treatment and everything, and is now one year clean and sober. And just a remarkable story, that's what this is all about and that's why we invest in that the way that we do and that's why that, that Tough Love Program produces results even if it sometimes it may seem harsh on the front end. but. Shane, proud of you. Uh, you're doing a great job. Keep up the great work, and thanks for typing that in. Robert uh, y Rice, I'm sorry, had typed in about vaccines within the city, and uh, will they be available? They will be available through many local providers and pharmacies, uh, private sector providers and pharmacies. If you don't have a local provider, um, the Snohomish County Vaccine Task Force will be standing up mass vaccination sites. Um, they're curr they currently have three in operation in the county. They'll be opening more as the flow of vaccines accelerates. Um, there are not any public areas that, that they're delivering the vaccine. I've offered that if, if they want to find one. In fact, I was on a call with the county uh, last week and offered to find a spot. Um, but they will be locating them throughout Snohomish County at various times. We may end up standing up a public one, but they have not asked uh, for that at this point. But many local providers will be carrying that. Go on the Snohomish uh, Health District website to keep most updated. They're managing that. Um, you can probably find it on the state uh, site as well. And um, anyway, so that's uh, something that you can follow there. Um, let me get back to some of these from the, uh, when I was doing the state of the city. Uh, when does Olympic View Park open? And so that we are scheduled to open. It's actually really close now. I believe by the end of February is the target. So this spring, I uh, see somebody typed in, uh, hoping for a, a spring opening. And I think that's, well, it might actually technically be winter, but but uh, we will definitely look to get this open here in the next couple of months. And really excited about Olympic View Park and glad to see people take interest in that. Um, thanks, Suzette, for, for typing in about the grants. Um, yeah, I wanted to really highlight that in the state of the city because um, what we do is try and take your tax dollars and leverage those, as I mentioned, to get a whole load of, of state and federal grants. And the way I look at that, you know, you're paying tax dollars that go to Washington, D.C., that go to Olympia, as am I, and all your city council members, we all live in city limits. Uh, and so, you know, our goal is to say, well, we don't, you know, we want to bring our share of that as much as we can back for projects in your city. Uh, that make a difference to your daily commute, your quality of life with your parks and recreation and things of that nature. And so we're really grateful for the partnerships we have at the state and federal level and the county level. You know, county helped us build Cedar Field there. The county uh, helped us with initial design on the 529 project. So we're really blessed with that. And uh, a lot of projects in Marysville get done because we get multiple funding sources, uh, things we couldn't fund on our own, you know. Um, and big transportation projects and, and big park projects, big trail projects like the Centennial Trail Connector up at Bayview. And so partnerships are critical. Um, I'll tell you what, I learned that early on as mayor. If you don't have quality partnerships, your city suffers and doesn't get a lot of great projects done. Um, but partnerships uh, really pay off. We, are, we can't do this by ourselves. And I'm really grateful for our partners at the county, at the state, and the federal level and also our other cities that we partner with uh, in, in a whole host of areas. So thank you to all of all of them. Um, thanks, Margaret, for uh, you typed in about liking the Christmas lights uh, program that we put on. And yeah, I think that was a lot of fun. You know, that that has a lot of potential, I think, even beyond uh, the COVID restrictions is uh, we had I didn't 
anticipate having that many families and, and businesses that would want to participate, but we got dozens and dozens of people that wanted to decorate their homes and, and participate in this. And so it was really fun and it really lit up the city, uh, no pun intended. And uh, it, it was a lot of fun. So thanks for participating. Thanks for the shout out on that. Byron asked for an update on the Public Safety Center. I think that was before I, I gave that update at the very end of the state of the city. But if you did not hear that uh, portion, um, essentially, you know, we're on track with that. It's, it's, it's right on schedule. Um, we were a little concerned with COVID that things might get delayed. So far, we've stayed on schedule and on budget. Um, and so we are looking to open that in the first quarter of 2022. So we're probably a year off, a little over a year off, but it's coming up quick. And you're probably able to watch that as you drive by, watch all the, the progress being made. And so we're really looking forward to that. And I gave a few more details in the state of the city. Hopefully you were able to pick up on that. And the state of the city will be available to, I believe through our uh, YouTube channel, you can watch it at any time or any part of it. Um, Thank you. Uh, There's a few comments typed in about thank you for advocating for and supporting small businesses. And I, I wanted to, to recognize that because that has been um, a real priority of mine and of your city council. I want you to know that. We uh, live in this community. We visit these small businesses. We hear their stories and we understand that they're bearing the brunt of this. And we are doing whatever we can to um, um, advocate for opening up our small business safely and allowing them to, to continue to do what they do. And uh, I'm so impressed with the small business community, how when they do open, you know, I've been in restaurants and uh, when, when they were allowed to be open and, and had the sitting there chatting with the staff or, or something, the owner, and they say, hey, it's gonna be a few, minute, few minutes for your table. Can you, you mind waiting outside? Those are the rules we have to follow. I just think that's, you know, that's just fantastic. They're, they are committed to following the rules and, and keeping their employees and their customers safe. And so we need to trust our small business community and allow them to open up and survive and save the jobs that they've um, contributed to our community. And, and I think that's really, really critical and important. So thank you for that. And we will continue to advocate for them. Um, shout out to the Marysville Food Bank came from Kevin. Yeah, thank you. I'll, uh, they deserve that. Food Bank's been remarkable. They're always remarkable, but particularly through this tough year and all the clients that they've served, really an amazing thing. Uh, just looking at a comment here, or actually a question from John Schmidt, I believe. When will the EV waterfront park be completed? We're excited about seeing the lumber mill and other buildings removed and, and the attractive landscaping. Yeah, John, that's a great question. That That's kind of our next big project, but due to the investments we're making in a lot of these big transportation projects and park projects and trail projects, um, I want you to be aware that that one's probably a few years down the road before you see anything really dramatic done there. It's a pretty expensive project and we still have a little ways to do to go on cleaning it up. I talked about some of the stormwater projects we're doing with Evie and some of the other things to clean the, the contaminants out of that area. That really has to get done before it becomes real attractive to private investment, which we want this to be a public private partnership. We do definitely want some public open space and, and area that we can enjoy as a community, as, as a park or amphitheater space maybe a kayak launch and things of that nature. But we also want private enterprise by way of some eateries and some fun places and maybe even some um, condos or townhomes uh, ability to, to, to build down there. So it'll be a mix of that. We're working on a, a five-year strategic plan here this year to kind of see how we're gonna implement that and hopefully we'll chip away at it year after year. Uh, right now we're focused on the cleanup as you've recognized, thank you for that and, and some of the planning and uh, partnerships that'll be necessary to pull that off. Bill asked any updates on the abandoned hotel construction at 116th across from Winco. Yeah, that I'm as tired as you all are of that. Uh, I've asked about that on a regular basis throughout the last couple of years as that's been there. For those of you that don't know, the owner of that property that was building a hotel there had a tough issue with contractors and a lot of mistakes were made. And essentially they just went into bankruptcy and that, that was uh, taken over by the bank and it's in the process of being resold uh, through the bank back out to a private entity. The last update I got a couple of weeks ago, I'm not sure that that transaction is complete yet. I don't believe that it is, but it may be. But we are waiting to eagerly work with the new owner uh, through permitting and whatnot to try and get that thing finished off. So 
it's a privately held property and a privately held business. So we're limited as a city as to what we can do in this particular situation where, where the bank owns it, much like if the bank owns a, a home or something of that nature. It's not something that the city really controls, but we're using whatever, whatever means we can to try and encourage the sale. And then we will be trying to help the individuals that, or whoever buys it try and get that built. We need a giant Ferris wheel on the mill site, Kim. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. That'd be fun to see that. We can. I hadn't actually thought of that. And I've never heard that, but that's not a bad idea, Kim. We, we can we can take a look at that. Uh, Dale asks, as a new resident in Marysville, what should I know about the future uh, of Marysville? Well, hopefully, we answered some of those questions. I would say, you know, we talk about live, work, play in Marysville. So we really strive to to give you a quality of life. And I think hopefully you grasp from some of the things we're doing by way of parks, trails. Unfortunately, as a new resident, you haven't gotten to experience all the free or low cost programs we offer Dale, but our parks, culture and recreation department, when you get into a robust year, when we're back in business, hopefully at some point here in 2021 and, and beyond, you'll see too at our opera house, um, at various places around the city, everything from our annual fireworks show, which is a huge hit, to touch a truck if you've got kids. That's a really popular one in September. Um, Healthy Communities Challenge Day in June, which is brings thousands out generally uh, over at Allen Creek Elementary School. In our Opera House, you'll have stuff going on every month, multiple events every month. You can go through everything from music to movies to performances. Um, we have a lot of offerings through our uh, Parks, Culture, and Recreation Department on youth sports leagues or adult sports leagues, so things of that nature. So I would encourage you to keep an eye out for that. Uh, it's a tough year to kind of gauge that, I know, uh, coming out of 2020. So that's kind of the some of the quality of life stuff and the trails and the parks that we're putting in. We have a water, hopefully you've gotten a chance to walk on the waterfront park down by the water and then Bayview Trail, which I mentioned, which will connect to Centennial and some of the others. As far as the work part, we're also really dedicated to trying to provide family wage jobs so people don't have to commute so much. And so our Cascade Industrial Center that I touched on here tonight is the area where we have set aside for manufacturing and industrial jobs. It's a rapidly growing area, a lot of new investment coming in. Uh, we just got it designated last year as an industrial center through the PSRC, one of only two in Snohomish County. A lot of infrastructure and roads going in there right now and new businesses are starting to come. So be on the lookout for that. So, so those are some of the things. We take public safety very seriously in Marysville Dale. And, Anybody who moves in here should know that we are fully supportive of our police department and our police, our, our fire and our court system. We believe uh, in, in uh, enforcing the law in Marysville. As you saw through our embedded social worker program, we also believe in compassion and helping people that are struggling with things like that and giving them a second chance. And um, we also believe that there has to be accountability on the other side of, of that and on the other side of all this stuff that our citizens deserve for, a, uh, for their elected officials to stand up and, and back their police and enforce the law. And we, we believe in that and we do that. The council I know stands by that and I certainly do as well. So thank you for that. Hopefully I answered some of your questions um, on what about the future of Marysville. Sandra asks about the Regal Movie Theater. When will it open? I hope soon. I enjoy movies, Sandra. Uh, and I know nationally Regal shut all their theaters down a few months ago. I, I know that because I have the Regal Pass and I get all those emails. So, you know, I think it's probably a matter of their corporate structure reopening theaters around the country. And then hopefully this will be one of the ones that survives this. That's a really hard hit industry, as you well know. So we are hopeful. I have not heard anything beyond the, the corporate shutdown and we haven't been given a date as to when they will start to reopen those. Linda asks, uh, the toy store and the food bank ran, and the toy store and the food bank ran through this. I'm sorry, I'm not, maybe I'm not understanding that, but Linda, I'll, uh, maybe there's something else further on in the thread here. Any updates on preserving Mother Nature's window, Scarlett? Yes, we do have a, a master plan for Mother Nature's window. Uh, it is not funded yet, so it's something we'll have to gain funding for in the future, and that again may involve some grants and some city money. But we do have a plan to preserve that and and make it more accessible and uh, you know more active for people to participate in. And we do try and you know if you notice anything going on in there that shouldn't be, let us know. We we, we definitely want to keep 
keep it clean and keep folks out of there that shouldn't be in there. And so let us know if you have any issues with that. Thanks, Shane. I uh, appreciate this comment on here too uh, that Shane put on that you can read on our Drug and Homeless program. Again, keep up the, the great work, Shane. You're, you're a uh, great example there. I appreciate that. Bill, any updates on the abandoned hotel? Address that a little bit earlier. Thank you for that, Bill. Hello from Perth, Western Australia, from Leslie. Wow, you, know, you probably take the award for having dialed in for, or logged in from the furthest away from us. Thank you for joining us, Leslie. I wonder what time it is. I think you're 16 hours ahead of us, if I remember. So you're, you're joining us um, from Australia. Thanks for that. And I think that is all of the questions that I have on here. If you have any other questions, type them on. I'm going to look through my list from during the event and see if I missed anybody. If I missed you, go ahead and type in, hey, could you answer this one? I just, I'd like to get in all of these before we sign off here. Again, thanks for all the kind comments as I'm scrolling back through these. I believe I got all of them. One last call. Is there any others? Go ahead and just type it in again. I see somebody I'm also wondering, so I'll wait just a moment. Oh, Linda, thank you. She's clarifying. You were giving a shout out to the Marysville Food Bank and Toy Store. I get it. Yes, for the toy distribution over the holidays, over Christmas. Thanks for that very much. And they deserve a ton of credit for that, uh, the toy store as well. Thank you for that. Thanks, Mark. Very kind comment. Appreciate that. Preston, uh, thank you for that. Kristen, a wooded property at the corner of 155th has been in public ownership for the future park for about 25 years. Yes. Yeah, very, very true. Um, and Kristen, yeah, we'll, we do have, again, plans for that, not funded yet, but it's, it's something that we will take a look at and uh, I'll look into that too with our parks department. Appreciate that there's some, some great interest in that. Angela, you bet. Thanks for your support of Tulalip community members. Absolutely, we, we really appreciate and treasure our partnership and uh, relationship with Tulalip. And we meet regularly with their board of directors and uh, I always enjoy visiting over there too. So thank you. Thanks, Carolyn, appreciate that. Preston, thanks. Yeah, we did an update on COVID for the city of Marysville. Hopefully you're able to watch that. Um, if not, you can pick it up later on our YouTube channel. I want to thank everybody. What's <laughs> Dale asked, what's my favorite ice cream? Well, I love ice cream, so we could go on and on, but I'd, I'd say Rocky Road would have to be my favorite. Now you're making me want to go get some ice cream here after we're done here. <clears throat> I'm a big ice cream fan. Thank you. What's going to happen at the old emissions property on first? We're not sure yet what will happen with that. Um, there are some talks and things going on, but, but we have no, nothing definitive on, on the old emission site. Good question, Kevin. Just giving it a moment. We've had a flurry of questions and comments at the end. By the way, as we get ready to close off here, and I'll, if there's any final questions, go ahead and type them in. I want you to know that if you didn't get a chance to answer a question, ask a question here, if you don't feel comfortable typing it in, feel free to get a hold of me at any time. Um, you can email me off our website, off our City of Marysville website, or you can call me off there too. My phone number's on there and happy to answer any questions that come over via email, phone call, or whatever. Try and get back to folks within 24 hours if at all possible. And so feel free to do that if you don't get to answer, ask your question here or if you didn't get your, an, your question answered here. What about the traffic? around the new Q Casino. Yeah, that, you know, again, that's on the Tulalip side <clears throat> of the freeway, so we don't um, control that, but I'm certain that there will be some increased traffic there. It makes that I-5-529 interchange that I talked about, I think, all the more important for both folks that are getting off exit 199 to go to Tulalip or those that are exiting on 199 to come into Marysville. 
So what that new interchange will do that'll be a little further back south is it'll allow a lot of our traffic to get off there and it'll free up a lot of the uh, crowding and, and congestion that you see at exit 199 currently today. So I think that will help. There are traffic improvements. I know that Tulalip's done around the queue that uh, should help with that as well. And so I believe that's opening here, I don't know, in the next month or so. And so we'll find out there. And I know there's ways to make adjustments. And I know tolelop has been through this before and there's ways that we'll, we'll partner with them in any way we can and uh, try and help that on both sides of the freeway. Kevin asked, can we swap out the stop sign for a yield sign on, first, on the first street bypass at 47th Avenue Northeast? Yeah, what? there's a little confusion on that, Kevin. I think I'm talking about the same stop sign you are. You only have to stop there if you're turning right. So almost nobody needs to stop there. So I know that can be confusing when you're, if you haven't driven it a lot and you're driving up there and you see a stop sign. But if you're taking that free left there, you're fine. So that's the whole idea between the first street bypass is you, you, you got a straight shot up and you take the free left and then you, you go down 47th and, and get up to through Sunnyside or wherever you need to go. We will look, we are evaluating that. We know the stop sign is confusing. Maybe, yeah, maybe a yield sign is better, but we, we do need a stop going right there. So uh, we can look at that with our public works department and continue to evaluate that. Thanks for that question. Enrique asks, what would be the best way to reach out to the community and advertise your small business? Well, that's a good question. I think, you know, there are a number of ways to do that. Uh, you know, I would say if you um, have a, a restaurant or a small business is particularly impacted by COVID, Enrique, we can, um, on the city website, we've been trying to promote our local small business community through this. I know the Chamber of Commerce can help you with that as well. There's a number of private entities that could do that. I don't want to necessarily list them off because I'll inevitably leave someone out and that's not really fair. But I would say get a hold of us here if you want to take part in some of our COVID promotions. The Chamber of Commerce could probably direct you to the most effective ways as well. Marysville well Toilet Chamber of Commerce. Hopefully that helps. Thanks, Will. He, looking at a February 3rd opening for the Quill. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Just an FYI, Winco, <laughs> Winco brand of Rocky Road ice cream is the best. Thanks, Sarah. I'll try. I don't know that I've tried Winco's. I'll, I'll have to try that. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Council members know how much I like ice cream because whenever we're out somewhere, we, we usually take a trip for ice cream. COVID-19 vaccines are impossible to get an appointment in, in Marysville. Yeah, Joanna, you, this is an important point. We are frustrated too with the vaccine situation. We were, just to be honest with you, we were shorted as a county. And we communicated that as, a, as county leaders, not just me, to the governor's office a week, or, week and a half or two weeks ago. We did not get our, our what was supposed to be our allotment for the county in the first shipment. That's been rectified. We will be getting now, but it has, I think, you know, I think all around the, the there's been some glitches in that. So I wish it had gone better. We don't, as a city government, we don't control any of that. We don't get any of the vaccine ourselves. We don't distribute any of it ourselves. So we're at the mercy of those doing it. So all we can do is advocate and let let people know what we're not getting and what's you know maybe what's going right and what's not going right and we have been very busy doing that and so uh, we are advocating to get more vaccine and marysville is not the only city this is all throughout snohomish county probably all throughout the state and and, and country to be honest but uh, i want you to know we're we're well aware of that and appreciate that concern very very much Sarah moved here uh, with a growing family from Seattle 14 years ago, not knowing anything about Marysville. So glad we did. Well, thank you for that. She thanks the Marysville and the council for the financial responsibility and supporting our police department. Sarah, that's always, it's always really neat to hear that. Somebody who moved in and appreciate those kind comments. Preston wants to see our new police chief, uh, Eric Scarpin. Yeah, that's a good idea, Preston. Um, we'll, we'll try and get the chief on a, on a virtual coffee clutch or something. He's been really making the rounds everywhere he can, and uh, he's a great addition to our city team here. I'd love to get him in front of the community. Thanks for that. Thank you, JJ. Appreciate that kind comment. JJ does a great job leading our local YMCA. Hey, we need to support our Y too, uh, and I would say that whether JJ was on here or not, I love the YMCA, and uh, they, like many of our health clubs, have, have gone through a tough time here. They're right up there with the restaurants, and so support your your local restaurants and health club if you can. I know they would greatly appreciate it. 
Thank you, Dee. Very nice comment. Really appreciate that. This has been a lot of fun. Um, you know, I'll, I wanted to say too, we'll continue to do our virtual coffee clashes here into 2021. As soon as we can, under the regulations, we'll start doing some live coffee clashes again. One of the things, I guess one of the silver linings uh, that we've learned is that the virtual coffee clashes actually attract more people. Um, that may be the true, true about this state of the city as well, being held virtually. That doesn't mean we'll stop doing the live ones. I'm not saying that, but we'll probably continue to do some virtual ones just because it's more convenient for people. You know, I know people are busy. Sometimes it's easier to log on from home when you can still help the kids with the homework or do whatever else you need to do or log in for 15, 20 minutes and move on to something else and not have to drive somewhere to attend. So hopefully these virtual events are helpful to you, the Q&As, the virtual coffee clashes, and keep an eye on the city website and our social media feed and the local papers for uh, more of those. We'll, we'll, we try and keep, we'll try and keep the virtual coffee clashes coming every six to eight weeks or so. And... Uh, you know, if, if more are desired, well, I'm happy to do more of them too. I love this. This is one of the funnest parts of the of the job. So thank you. Preston asked when the next event. Yeah, we haven't we haven't put the next coffee clash together yet. We wanted to focus on this first, but we'll get information out on that soon. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and uh, begin to wrap up. I want to thank you. It's a real honor, really is an honor to serve as your mayor. Um, I just really appreciate this community. We've been through tough times before, and I know this last year has been tough, but this community just stands behind uh, the city, stands behind one another, pitches in to help out, help out those in need, and uh, just a, a wonderful community. I know um, I've lived here for almost 30 years now. Um, in fact, my wife and I, uh, this is the only place we've lived, and so I, I love it. I love Marysville. I love everything about Marysville. I can't wait to get our high school teams back going so I can start going to games again and all that and see more people. And so thanks for all you do for the community. You know, there's no us without you. I, I, I know I, I say that around here at City Hall. There's no us without you out there, the, the taxpayer and the, the folks that uh, really make this city work. And so we try and, and uh, take that to heart and really give you our all. Um, I, as I mentioned, we, we run lean. If you look the citizen to employee ratio here, you're, get, you're getting a um, a good good shake for your tax dollar and that's uh, you deserve that and so the council and i are committed to that as is the city employee workforce and so we do have some needs to beef up our workforce i will say and we had planned to do that before COVID hit we kind of put a pause on that but we do need to help out some folks that are, are really pulling a lot of weight out there and we'll get to that just as soon as we can and so thanks for your patience on that i want to close by just saying one initiative I have for this year that I'm hoping you all can help with is uh, litter cleanup. And so we're doing a lot of big things, a lot of neat big parks and trails and road projects and uh, all kinds of things. And so those really help the city to shine, but we don't wanna neglect the little things that people you know, drive down the road. And so I know I jog and walk a lot and uh, I need to, to do it myself, bring a litter bag along, particularly when I'm walking, a little more tougher when I'm jogging, but if I'm walking the dog, and just pick up some litter if I see it on a trail or a roadway. And so if you're interested in that, I, I, you know, I, I do see people doing that all the time. Uh, and it just warms my heart when I drive by and I'll see somebody out on a walk with a litter picker picking it up. Those are, those are just, those are great citizens. And um, if you're interested in Adopt a Street, get a hold of our Public Works teams, uh, team or email us up here in the executive office. But that's going to be something we try and emphasize in 2021 to get our volunteer spirit going with just maybe some litter cleanup just around your neighborhood. If everybody kind of takes care of their own area, it'll really help. It's a real shame that people uh, drive around and throw stuff out the window. It, it's a needless thing. It's unfortunate, but it's a reality in every single city. Believe me, I, I go to a lot of conferences and everything. And every city deals with this litter problem. And as urban areas grow, it, it, it just becomes an issue. So we do have city staff that does this and they try and keep the real heavily traveled areas clean. They do a remarkable job. We're one of the cleaner areas in that. But there's a lot, you know, we have a lot of lane miles. We go from Sunnyside all the way north past the Everett Clinic out there and past the Costco area. We go west from I-5 all the way east up to Highway 9. That's a lot of area. And there's no way we could hire enough people to, to, to handle that all on our own. But we, we are dedicated to beefing that up here in 2021 and doing all that we can with a city employed workforce to do that. And if we can pile on top of that some, some volunteer assistance, that would be very, very helpful. 
Thanks again, Kim, Lexi, Shane. Appreciate those comments and Jennifer. Very, very nice. Thanks, Dave. Many hands make a lighter workload. That is true. So with that, we'll go ahead and sign off. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Any further questions, go ahead and give me a ring or send them via 